Welcome to the St. John Paul II National Shrine Virtual Art of Prayer series. As the doors of the shrine are closed temporarily, let us heed in new ways St. John Paul's invitation to open wide the doors of our hearts to Christ. This Sunday evening series usually takes place in the Shrine's Luminous Mysteries Chapel, where we gather to practice, in His words, training in holiness, which calls for a Christian life distinguished above all in the art of prayer. For our first remote gathering and through the last Sundays of Lent, Art of Prayer will continue with meditations on the Sunday Gospels and the Shrine Mosaics. May this virtual chapel help us to open the space of our interior sanctuary. This Sunday is Letare Sunday, Letare being the Latin word for rejoice. Now, why is the Church rejoicing in the first place? With the coronavirus upending so many aspects of daily life, rejoicing may seem like the very last thing we want to do. But this Sunday is set aside exactly for that purpose because we are officially past the halfway mark of Lent. So this Sunday stands as a reminder of what we have already accomplished, but more importantly, of what awaits us if we continue our Lenten journey in faith and trust. The Gospel for this Sunday turns our gaze toward the man born blind, a man afflicted and in need of healing. Yet it was this man without sight who perceived the reality of the person of Christ and confessed him as Lord. Today, as we cannot attend Mass physically and receive our Lord in the Eucharist, we too long for the gift of spiritual sight. And just as the disciples asked Christ whether it was the man's sins or his parents that caused his blindness, we too find ourselves searching for answers in the face of suffering. And Christ does not admonish his disciples for asking about the blind man's condition. Instead, he descends into the very source of this man's misery to meet and transform it using the lowliest of materials to work a miracle. And in doing this, Christ has lowered himself to reach into the dirt of our own lives, of human suffering, promising transformation and healing, so that like the blind man, we may also proclaim with faith that he is the Lord. The shrine's mosaic of the healing of the man born blind is juxtaposed with the disciples on the road to Emmaus, and in a sense, these two disciples, who were friends of Jesus, were also affected by blindness, unable to recognize him walking with them due to their shaken faith. We can often be tempted to be overcome by despair in the face of calamity, and therefore incapable of seeing Christ in our midst. Yet once again, it's faith that enables the disciples to perceive not only who Christ is, but what he had become in the breaking of the bread. In this particular rendering of the scene, we notice that the disciples are gazing not so much at Christ's face, but toward the bread in his hands. While we long to receive the body and blood of Christ as well, we also remember the words he spoke just before his ascension, Behold, I am with you always, until the end of the age. And so, as we continue on our Lenten journey during these admittedly unusual times, we ask Christ for the gift of perceiving his presence at all times, even when he seems to have disappeared from our midst. Indeed, through the eyes of faith, we cannot cease to see him present in all places and filling all things. With the blind man, let us pray, I do believe, Lord. 